Hello, I'm Leanne from Spectrum Noir, Crafters Companion, and today we're going to have a look at how to do some basic blending. So hopefully you will have mastered the even and smooth blend, and now you're ready to move on and use that technique to allow you to achieve something as beautiful as this, where we've got real 3D dimension, we can see where the light is, we can see where it's getting darker, we've got highlight and shadow, we've got depth and we've got light and we've got dimension. It's very basic and it is a really good place to start and we're going to have a quick look at how you would achieve this type of effect by colouring this little hat here. So I'm just going to pop this to one side and we're going to have a look at how to do it. So you'll have printed off your Spectrum Noir accreditation test and you've got this image here to practice with and to colour. This is the one that I'm going to aim for. This is what we're going to be looking at. The colours I've used are here at the bottom and I'll talk to you about them as we go through. But just for reference, if you want to write them down, I've used CT1, CT3, CT4, GB6, GB8 and GB9. Now when you come to do this, I only want you to think about using three colours and I'll show you why as we go through. But then I'll show you how by using the deeper colours, you really do get extra depth and dimension. That's just a little bit of extra something special for you. But when you submit your test, you don't need to use more than three. You can use upwards of three if you want to, but it's not essential. So this is what we're aiming for. So I've got my little girl here and we're going to start with um, the first layer of colour. Now what I'm going to do is just put down a little bit of blender first and I'm just putting that here at the edge of the hat because this is where it will be the lightest. And you can see here that I'm telling you light source or highlight is going to be at the front of the hat. So where it's going to be lightest, where I'm going to leave a little bit of white, I'm just popping a little bit of blender which primes the card, makes it a little bit damp and so when we start to blend in the other ink we'll soften it. So that's the first step. Then I'm using the lightest <clears throat> colour and I'm using CT1. And what I'm going to do is now fill in the centre here um, using the technique we learned in Smooth Blend to saturate the card with this first layer of the lightest ink in the centre because that will aid the other colours to blend in with it and create that smooth effect that we want to achieve. So you do want to get your smooth saturation of colour as we practised before. So that's all in the centre. I've left it here a little bit white because we're going to start dark at that end and I've left it here at the end here white because that's where it's going to be the lightest and we'll deal with that in a second. So I've got my first layer down of CT1. Then I'm going to take my darkest colour which is CT4 and I'm going to put in the darkest area on the hat because the light is here so this is where it's lighter naturally this is going to be in shade at the end of here so it's going to be darker so I'm going to put in my darkest colour here so I'm outlining as we did when we looked at the smooth blend again so I'm outlining there because I won't come back up to that area again and then I'm bringing in my darkest colour and I'm aiming for that even saturation again because wet ink blends, dry ink doesn't. And you really need your ink to remain wet. And that's why I'm working on one portion of the hat at a time. I'm not working on the whole hat uh, because the ink would dry before I got to it and then I wouldn't get a very good result. Now I'm using CT3 and I'm going to blend the CT4 into the CT1 using CT3. So I'm just coming up to the end of that CT4 there and I'm dragging that into the CT1, the first layer, using this middle colour. So this is your basic three colour blending technique. This is what you will use the majority of the time. And you can see that that there has blended through beautifully. You can see where I've brought it through from the dark into the CT1 first layer because that ink was nice and wet and we've got a lovely gradation of colour coming along there into the first layer of CT1. And then I take quickly again my CT1, oh, CT1, not CT4, but we can fix that because what I'll do is I'll just work it through into the base piece of scrap card. See that with the CT1, I'm pushing that mistake 
it's rather fortuitous that that happened pushing that mistake through and then I'll just blend the CT3 back into the CT1 and you can see actually I've managed to get rid of that which is good and if it doesn't get rid of first time you can let it dry and go back and do it again and then that would certainly fix it okay so that's CT1 so I can see from looking at that I love this blend but actually I want to bring it a little bit further out I haven't come far enough with my dark so I'm going to take my CT4 and I'm just going to come out a little bit further with the darker colour so using the rule of thirds really and then my CT3 to bring that back across and you can see that that's just beautifully blended that over there we go with a CT3 and you can see you can't see where I made that mistake now which is super pleased I did it I did that just for you that's a little gift from me to you and then I'm bringing the CT1 back from the CT3 there we go just moving it up to the edge but not quite to the edge because I want to keep that little white highlight and then I would use my blender just to soften that edge so that kind of lets the CT1 merge in with that white soft edge and that's how you would work from your dark to light with your basic three colour blend there on that little hat. Now as the ink starts to evaporate you might see um, more definition in the lines where you've joined the colours. Don't keep working on it because your ink will just um, bleed out into the card. What I'd like you to do is just let that settle, let it dry and then if you need to go back and add some more colour to smooth those lines out then you can absolutely do that and it really does depend on the environment whether it's cold or warm where you're colouring whether you've got that even saturation of ink how quickly the inks evaporate and at different times on the on the image because you've got more ink in one place than the other so just let it settle and then go back and fix that if you want and actually while we've talked where I could see a very definite line between my CT4 and CT3 I can't actually see that anywhere near as much now because the alcohol is evaporating and leaving behind the pigment. So it's magic as well. Um, and I do want you to just think about that and leave it and let it go. And when you come back after you've had a cup of tea, you may see that it's magically smoothly blended. And that does happen, believe it or not, purely because of the evaporation, oh, evaporation of the alcohol. So I would continue and do exactly that same technique with the brim. And then we'd go and do the brim underneath. And I'm going to do it very, very quickly so you can see how that happens. So again, with the CT1 all over, leaving a little bit of white for the highlight at the end and leaving it at the back because we're going to put the CT4 down. So a lovely saturation of colour. CT4. Don't do a straight edge when you're bringing them into each other like this. Do have it... Um, I don't know what you would call that other than jagged to be fair but not smooth not a straight line not linear because it's much harder to blend when something's linear you do want difference in the edges and then the CT3 is going to blend that CT4 into the CT1 look how easy that is and beautiful CT3 into the CT1 and then finally our CT1 to bring that CT3 up to the white area so it's getting lighter and lighter as we go along and finally Mr Blender just to soften that edge from the CT1 into the white highlight of the hat and so how quick and easy was that and that's something you'll be able to do at that speed and the quicker you work the better blend you'll get. Now just to give more shade and shadow to the underneath of the hat, we're going to bring in an extra colour and I'm going to bring in my GB6 <clears throat> because it will be very shaded underneath the hat here, underneath the brim, I'm going in with a much darker colour just to add that shadow in there. And actually that's dark, but I want it a bit darker. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of GB8 as well. 
because I want it to be really shadowed. And I do like to use browns, which is the golden brown that I'm using here, GB, when I'm working with yellow. I think it works really well. And actually, this is just a touch of GB9. I really want that to look shadowed under there because it's a broad brim of a hat. So there we go. Pop that in there and that's where the, the darker colours came. You don't have to do it with as many colours when you submit your test, but just so you can see how I've done it. And then my GB4, sorry, my CT4, I beg your pardon, is going to bring that out there. So you can see where the shadow is and where the colour of the hat is. Just go gently around her little face because you you'll do her skin later. how that brings it all in together and then finally I'll do the CT3 As you can see the true colour of the colour of the hat coming through there and you've got a much more shaded little brim underneath so that's exactly how I achieved that and that's exactly what you're going to do um, and then you're going to submit your test. And then once you've done that, you can take that basic blending technique, apply it to the whole image, and you've got something really quick and easy and as beautiful as that. So practice, 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 three color blending technique, and let's see what you come up with. Mm -hmm.